Hey, I'm Adam Kelly. In this tutorial, we're going to use Unity ML Agents to create color changing chameleons that use visual observations to detect the color of their background and then try to match that color. By the end of this video, you'll have chameleons that are able to change color like these ones that you see right here. Also, any additional resources like code or 3D models or corrections, that sort of thing, make sure to check out the links in the description below. And you'll also see ways that you can connect with me on social media. Before we get started, I wanted to show you the companion tutorial page on my website for this video. There's a link in the description below the video. So click on that and then scroll down. I'll have some more stuff filled in on this by the time the video posts, but there's this start here first section where I give you links to the Unity documentation for installing ML agents and setting up Anaconda and installing Unity and also the basic guide, which will help you make sure that everything's running properly and also some instructions on curriculum learning. So all that stuff is kind of important to understand what happens in this video, but the rest of it is very specific to creating visual chameleons. You'll need some code and assets as well. Those will be here by the time the video posts. So let's get started. I have Unity open with an empty scene which is just the default scene that I've renamed to chameleon scene, and that's in my scenes folder. I've also imported the three scripts, the chameleon academy, the agent, and the area, as well as the meshes, the chameleon and the chameleon base. So there's our chameleon, and there's the base that he's going to stand on. Now I'm gonna create a new folder inside of assets called brains, open brains, and then we're going to create a new ML agents learning brain from this menu here. We'll call it chameleon learning. And inside chameleon learning, we need to expand brain parameters. We need to change vector observations to zero because there will be no observations aside from our video feed that's coming in. And then we need to add a new visual observation. So click on this button. We want to stick with the default 84 pixels by 84 pixels, and we do not want a grayscale. We're going to use color. Finally, we're going to use a space type of discrete. We're gonna have three branches, one for each color, red, green, and blue and each one is going to have three options. And those three options are to decrease by one, stay the same, or increase by one. So negative one, zero, or one. And these branch descriptions are red, green, and blue. Now inside our scene, we're going to create a new empty object we're going to rename it to Academy. And we're gonna add a component. And if you search in here for Chameleon, let's add the Chameleon Academy. Now, the first thing that needs to change in here, we need to add a brain to the broadcast hub. So we'll click that button, and then we will select our Chameleon Learning Brain from the list. And we want control set to checked because we're going to train this learning brain. Max steps should be set to 1000 because we that's as long as we need to train each round. And then the other two things, well, three things here. First is reset parameters. We need to add a reset parameter, color accuracy. And this will be used in our curriculum so it needs a default value for the curriculum value. And we're gonna set this to 0 0.7 for the first one. We'll come back to color accuracy later. And then the color change frequency is going to be left at zero. I have the code set up so that if you set a positive value for this, then it'll change the color of the platform automatically. But we don't wanna do that. We want the training, the academy and the training to automatically do that for us. And then the color change magnitude, this right here, this number is defaulted to 
five divided by 255 because each red, green, and blue value can go from zero to 255. And each step, we want it to be able to change by five. So if it says plus one on the uh, action that's going to change one of these colors, it's actually going to increase the color value by five. Hey, this is Future Adam. I just wanted to come back in and update a couple things now that I've successfully trained the chameleons. So the first thing is under training configuration time scale. When I had it set to the default of 100, it was just making Unity way too choppy. And that might be my machine or it might be because we're doing a visual uh, agent here and just running it at a hundred times the speed just isn't reasonable. So I would recommend changing this down to 10. And then for the color change magnitude, when I had this set to a low value during training, it was not training. Uh, when I set it to 0.1 instead, I found that it trained much more effectively. Uh, I kept this color change frequency on zero for the training portion. But this, I might, I'm guessing that this just allowed it to explore more colors more quickly as it's training and settle on things that worked versus when it was much smaller, then it just wasn't getting there. So still what's great is once I was running inference, once I've taken that training data and plugged it in and, and running this later, I set this color change frequency up to four later. So you can ignore this for now, keep it at zero. But when I set this to 2 divided by 255, it was able to do a very slow color change using the information it learned by doing fast color changes. So that's just kind of a, a little update just so that you know what's going. For now, just keep it to 0 and 0.1 until you've fully trained it. Next, we want to set up our area and our agent inside the scene. So first thing I'm going to do up in the scene is delete my main camera because we don't need it. We'll keep the directional light. And then we're going to create a new empty object and we'll call it chameleon area. And let's set the position to zero, zero, zero. And then this area right here is going to need a script attached to it. Specifically, it's going to need the chameleon area script attached to it. So we will click add component and we'll add chameleon area. And it wants to know where or which object is the platform. So we need to add a platform. And that's up in meshes. And I've called it chameleon base. So we're going to drag this up underneath or on top of this chameleon area. This is our base, and we will be able to hook this in. So we'll click and drag this into this object right here. And then we also need to add a new agent. So I'm going to create another empty inside of here. We'll call it chameleon agent. And just make sure that the position is 0, 0, 0. And then under here, we want to drag our chameleon. So now we have a chameleon sitting in here. We need to make sure that there are materials hooked up to these. So under materials, I've created three materials. So you'll want to create one for the base, one for the eyes, and one for the skin. If you, to create a material, you just right click and go to create and you create a material. The only thing that's maybe of note is I've turned the smoothness all the way down to zero that helps so that you don't have weird reflections and stuff. The next step to do is just drag the colors into the right place. So that's the base material. The eye material needs to go here and I'm going to rotate around and set the eye material to this too. And then finally the skin color is here. Once we have our materials hooked up, we need to make sure our agent has the right script on it and that's the chameleon agent script. So chameleon agent is going to need a couple things. It's going to need a brain. So let's click here and we'll add chameleon learning as its brain. We need to add a camera. We don't have a camera yet. So we're going to create a new camera. 
and this camera is not in a place that's good for viewing the uh, chameleon right now. So I'm going to move it while holding the control key and just moving this. That means it'll kind of lock to the right place on the grid or to actual grid points. And we're going to rotate this around this axis so that it's looking down at the chameleon. And then finally, we want to probably move this over. So I'm going to see if I can maybe move it here so that we can see more of it. And I'm going to rotate. So I'm seeing this preview here, and it's still not quite where I want it. So I'm going to keep moving it until I get it kind of where I want it. Oops. The positioning of this is the only thing that's important really is making sure that you can see enough of the background and the foreground. So this little camera preview is helpful for that. So my wife has been editing these YouTube videos and when I showed her this video, she had a very good question. Why are we using a third person camera that can see the chameleon instead of putting the camera right in front of the chameleon's head so that it would be more realistic, like a real chameleon would probably use his eyes to look at his surroundings and change his color accordingly. I thought it would be a more interesting problem just to have the chameleon detect his own color with this third person camera. So it's not completely realistic, but what's cool about it is it's a camera that sees this chameleon's color and says, okay, I'm green and the background is gray. So I need to go from green to gray versus just knowing that it has to get to gray, but not knowing what its current color is. So now we have our camera. The only thing I like to do is we don't need it to see as far as it's seeing. So maybe we only let it see, say, 15 meters away. That should mean that anything that's beyond this clipping plane, and that might actually be a little bit too close. Maybe let's move it to 25 just to be safe. This just means it's not going to keep rendering create things that are really far behind it. So back to our chameleon agent, we're going to drag our actually first, sorry, we need to add a camera. Then we drag our camera into that slot. We need to set the max step to a thousand again. Whoops, didn't mean to uncheck that. And then we need to hook up our uh, chameleon area, which is this object. Actually, I don't know if we're ready to hook that up yet. We need to uh, definitely set up our chameleon mesh object. So this is going to be used by the code to change the, the material. And then the chameleon area, it will be hooked up to this, but let's create a couple of prefabs first. So we're gonna create a new folder, prefabs. And inside this folder, the first thing we'll do is we'll create a prefab of this agent by dragging it down into here. And then we're gonna create a prefab of this entire area and drag it down here. And then so that we can edit this area, we'll click this button right here to open the prefab and then we'll change this chameleon area to be hooked up here. And that should make it so that if we make duplicates of this area, then it should copy this pattern correctly. So we can save this scene. And now we have our first area and agent set up properly. Now we want to train with several of these. So I'm going to take this and copy it and duplicate it actually. And I'm going to hold control again, just so that it kind of locks into place and then make sure that this is far enough away. Maybe I'll make it so that this X position goes up to 40 and I'm going to select both of these and then duplicate again. And we will move. I'm holding control again until I see that Z value in the type top right corner, go to 40, this one. And then I'll select all of them, duplicate, and then hold down control again. And it's not letting me make sure that they're perfect, but that should be pretty good. 
Let me see if I can select two of these and yeah. Oh, well, I got it perfect. So this is 80 and then you can, it doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just particular. So now we have eight of these ready to train. And the other thing I wanted to show was how to get an idea of what this camera, this 84 pixel by 84 pixel camera is going to look like. So the game view right now looks like this. You're probably familiar with this. It's just viewing one of these cameras. If you go up into this menu here under game, it says free aspect. If you click it, you can create a new one. And if you do this, you'll be able to add a label. I called mine 84, which you can see right there. I did a fixed resolution and I set the width and height to 84. So I'm not gonna create a second one, but that's how I created this. And then you can see this is what the artificial intelligence will see, the machine learning algorithm will see as it's trying to match the colors. That should be it for setting up the scene. So make sure you save it and we will train it in the next video.